Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we are back with another speed build video of Pontus Zoo, aka our aquatic zoo. I, I should just stop saying aquatic zoo because it is going to be Pontus Zoo. We're going to add all the aquatic animals. Uh, well, we, we have the penguin and the gray zoo right now. The giant otter and the caiman don't really fit in this zoo, in my opinion, unless we're going to create some kind of indoor building but definitely on the outside i think this tega biome is definitely too cold for them but i really want to add all the future aquatic animals hopefully even an aquarium that will be just super amazing but we have to wait and see about that but okay so we're going to add an animal that is not an aquatic animal because we're going to add the doll sheep i actually had the plan to start building a Siberian tiger habitat, so we're probably going to do that in the next one, but I was searching for the right spot for it and then I was like, oh, I really want to do something with the doll sheep because the doll sheep is just so underrated, but they're so cool because the doll sheep are really like super good climbers, aka jumpers, like they really live in the mountains and they are just really awesome to build a habitat for. If you haven't seen it yet, I also highly recommend you to watch my doll sheep habitat in City Zoo, which was the first time I actually played around with the doll sheep and how they work with creating mountains and stuff. And this one is actually the next level, or if you could call it that way. But yeah, this is definitely something that I learned a lot from with the City Zoo habitat. And now we're going to create something more awesome for the doll sheep because they're just so cool and you really can play around with like rock formations and stuff because they are really able also in the game to jump from one rock to the other rock so that is just super awesome and I really love to play around with that it's something that you don't really do often in the game with other animals so yeah that is why I really love doing this so we start off with, uh, yeah, creating the habitat, of course, drawing out the habitat lines with some fences. And uh, later on, we start with the mountain because I really wanted to make sure that we have some kind of shelter, aka cave, with a cave viewing with the path side. Now, I didn't do too much yet on the cave itself, like decorating it and stuff, because I'm probably going to add another cave viewing for another animal on the other side, maybe. So I'm not quite sure yet what my plans are for this area. So I'm probably going to finish that off later on, but you won't really notice it that much for this whole habitat build, to be honest. So yeah, for cave viewing, we obviously have this glassy wall looking into the shelter area for the doll sheep. And the shelter or, or cave, how you want to call it, has two different entrances. I think that is the right word for it. Uh, so on one uh, on two sides of the habitat. So the habitat feels a little bit like split off into two different sections. So I think that looks really nice. And uh, yeah, it gives it definitely a more an, a new vibe to the whole habitat, in my opinion. So as you can tell, I'm using the three different type of rocks, just like we did with the Arctic wolf habitat. So we have the tundra, the taiga, and the aquatic rocks because... I think like using the aquatic rocks only by itself, I think it's going to be too much. Like we did that and we're going to do that more closely around the aquatic dome. Like we did use it a lot for the gray zoo habitat and I really, really love it. But I feel like for habitats that are a little bit further away, I think it's better to blend it in more with some more natural rocks. And yeah, combining the rocks really works well in my opinion. So yeah, that is why I keep doing that. It's probably going to happen throughout the whole zoo, just having this combination. And also to have a little bit more freedom once I do want to play around with those aquatic rocks. Because those aquatic rocks definitely uh, are a huge part of the mountain shape itself. Like the backside of it is a wall with the aquatic rocks. And underneath it, I used a lot of the flat rocks from the aquatic pack as well to create those different elevations where the doll sheep is able to jump from one side to the other side. And uh, yeah, I was actually quite happy and surprised that it works super well with these type of rocks. Like obviously, I did have some struggles sometimes with the traversable area for the doll sheep and especially 
when I started to add more of the Tega or the Tundra rocks to, to give it a little bit more variation. So I sometimes had to go back, it was quite annoying uh, because it did hurt their traversable area too much. But then it was just a matter of like moving around a few of the rocks again and then everything was fine again. So it wasn't that hard, but it's just more of like annoying because for your feeling, it really adding just a few flat normal rocks really doesn't change anything. But game wise, it sometimes does, which is just super annoying. So this definitely is different from the habitat, I, like I just said, from City Zoo. With City Zoo, we used more of like angled flat rocks to create some kind of path through the mountains and then had like a few rocks sticking out where the doll sheep could jump on. But this is definitely completely different in that way that the doll sheep is now able to only jump from one rock to the other rock. And that is also a little bit inspired by real life zoos. They don't have these big type of habitats, obviously. They should, in my opinion. <laughs> but no, they don't have these big habitats but when you do see their habitat you see more of like only those jumping rocks instead so that is why i use that as well in this zoo i can't really tell a particular zoo name or anything but those were just some pictures that i saw with it with googling and on the rocks on top of it i tried to use some hay beddings and some more enrichment items to just make sure that the doll sheep will be attracted more to the top of the mountain as well like, for example, also using that uh, uh, herb sense, I think that is called that way. So yeah, really trying to make sure that the doll sheep is going up and down by itself as well. So that is really cool. I do really like how that works in the game and that it works. So more in front of the habitat, there is more of like this archway where the doll sheep can walk under. It, as I said, like it feels like the habitat is a little bit split into two different sections and it's split off with of course the big mountain and then you have like the smaller archway and I actually didn't intend it to be but the archway was also walkable for the doll sheep so in the end I had to make sure that they were not able to uh, jump off of the rock formation because then they will be able to escape so that's definitely something we don't want to happen of course but it was quite funny that I was just making an archway and didn't realize that the doll sheep would be able to escape probably <laughs> so i had to fix that a lot of I, I had to come back to that area a lot more often because the rock formation still there and i thought like oh yeah now it's fixed and then it wasn't fixed again <laughs> it was quite funny but yeah it's all good right now so we don't have to worry about it doll sheep being able to escape from their habitat so I really wanted to give them a natural water section in their habitat also because I just don't want to use the water pump and I just really love this biome I think especially if you also look at the arctic wolf habitat with the beautiful waterfall I think the color scheme in this biome in this tega biome is just so beautiful so yeah every water section that I add just feels so I don't know, I just really love the look of it. And I really wanted to make sure, of course, um, that the doll sheep or that the water section is not super deep. So it's just deep enough for the doll sheep to have a little swim if they want to, but it's mostly intended for them to just drink from it. But I really wanted to make sure that it would not be deep enough. I'm actually not sure, now that I think of it, they might not be able to swim at all, but they're just able to walk through it now that I think of it. I think they're only able to walk through it, so not really to swim in it. I'm not really sure if a uh, doll sheep would, sh would swim in the end, so I, I don't think it really matters. But I do really want to have this natural section for them to be able to drink the water, obviously. So just like the Arctic wolf habitat, I wanted to make sure that the top of the habitat is more snowy. Now, as I said, I had some issues with adding some more natural rocks in combination with like the mountains with the aquatic rocks. So I in the end was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep that snow snow free because I was afraid that it would hurt the traversable area too much and it would take me like an hour or two to fix that all and I didn't want to do that. So in the end I just kept only snow on the terrain itself so I didn't use any white rocks or snow rocks or anything like that. And uh, of course, just like we did with the Arctic wolf habitat, the lower area of the habitat will be a little bit more green to really give that contrast in the habitat itself. So 
the lower part feels a little bit more like a valley, even though it's like a very small valley, but uh, I think it looks definitely super nice. Uh, the only difference with the arctic wolf habitat is that I did not use too many shrubs or the moss that we use with the arctic wolf. I don't know, I found like that didn't really fit too well. I don't know why, I just didn't want to do it in this habitat, but also it's, it's better because then you have like these differences in their habitats and I think you're really not missing out on it in this doll sheep habitat to be honest. But obviously I did uh, put down a lot of the trees and stuff, not too many because the habitat is not super big, but I really wanted to make sure that they're really placed strategically. So you really, I really always try to pay attention to my tree skyline, if that makes sense. I really try to see from every guest point of view, like how does it look from this side? How does the trees look on that side? And I really try to pay attention to where I put down my trees. And uh, I obviously also try to put down a few of the trees more on the higher grounds of the mountain, but not too many, really trying to uh, make sure also that the traversable area would not be hurt for the doll sheep, because that is definitely an issue. Once you put down one tree on the wrong spot, you could hurt the whole traversable area on the mountain. So yeah, there's definitely something to pay attention of. So as I said, like the guests will have several open areas where they can look into the habitat, but I really wanted to make sure that not the whole habitat would be open. There is on the left side, you have the Arctic wolf habitat and there's only one path going there. So you want to avoid having like these bottlenecks with a lot of guests looking into it. So I really had to make sure that there are no viewing galleries overlapping. Like if you, ha if you have on one side people looking at the Arctic wolf, they can't look into the doll sheep habitat at the same time. You really want to make sure that it's not getting too busy at the viewing areas. But also I just in general didn't want to make it like a super open habitat, even though there is pretty much a path going around the whole habitat, except for like the front, like the lower area where the keeper gate is, because I really want to make some kind of staff building uh, in front of that area. I think that is a perfect spot for it, especially when we're going to add more habitat. I think we definitely need a more central, well, it's not really central, like the aquatic dome itself is quite central, but I think it still feels like a more central area where this staff building would be. But that is for later. I'm not really sure if that is going to be something that we're going to do anytime soon. But that spot is reservated to become a staff area in case you were wondering. So of course, uh, finishing off the habitat, I wanted to make sure that we have enrichment items on the spots to make sure where uh, the guests can see them more up close. So I really wanted to give that a nice spot for the guests to see them. And in the cave itself, I also obviously put down some more hay beddings to make sure that whenever it starts to rain or to snow and the doll sheep want to have some shelter. They're just nice and warm. I'm not really sure if they should need to be warm, but <laughs> you guys know what I mean. They have some shelter in a cave. I actually wonder if the doll sheep, they, they actually in real life live in real mountains. I wonder if they also try to find some kind of cave or something or that they just sleep and always live outside of it. I'm actually not really sure. I, I think they also need some kind of shelter area in the game but very often I do wonder if you have like this shelter requirement for an animal in the game if they actually would have some kind of shelter in real life that counts for a lot of different type of animals though like like think of elephants for example like elephants <laughs> they they can have shelter underneath some African trees for example but there's nothing else, like there's not like a huge big cave where shell uh, where elephants would fit in, you know what I mean? So yeah, sometimes I see like, okay, this animal needs some kind of shelter and then I'm like thinking like, what, why? And then in real life, they also would not need a shelter, do they? <laughs> like obviously sometimes you have animals that live in holes or do live in caves, for example, but that does not count for each and every animal, right? So I don't know, I'm <laughs> just thinking out loud here. Anyways, last but not least, I obviously finished off the whole habitat 
with some beautiful aquatic small rocks, my favorite rocks. As always, I really just think that really just finishes off the whole habitat and I really love the look of it, especially also around the water section itself. I think using those small little rocks inside and on the edges of the water just looks absolutely amazing, even though I really should try to tone it down a little bit these days with these small little rocks, but I just really, really love it. So I can't help it. Sorry, don't blame me. <laughs> Anyways, do let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this doll sheep habitat for Ponte Sue. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel a little extra, you may want to consider to become a FayFam member with the join button of YouTube or maybe via Patreon. And you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch. You can find all those links in the description down below. And uh, yeah, I really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, guys.